So thank you all for joining us. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Absolutely. I was waiting for Jane to start, but I'll do it. <laughs> My name is Danielle Brooks, and I'm joining us from Canada, Montreal, Canada, and my work is in sacred sound healing. Jane, do you want to introduce yourself now? Yeah, I'm Jane Marquis, and I'm from Caledon, Ontario, and um, I'm a naturopathic doctor and a homeopath, and yeah, so I'm excited to be here. Amazing. And my name's Juliet Bryant, and I am a nutritionist and a healer. So today we're all just going to have about life, the universe, and everything, and um the subject that really came through strongly today uh, for me was trust uh, and trust in life. Um, uh, some friends of ours wrote this beautiful song um, and it goes, trust in life, trust that the way will be clear. And um, that's really what's been coming into my, my brain today um, because I think sometimes life can be challenging, can't it? And we can have lots going on and sometimes we lose sight that actually everything is happening just as it's meant to and that we are being guided through whatever is happening even though it may not seem it all the time. I think sometimes in order to be able to know that we're being guided we have to open up that door. We have to actually be the first one to step in and say out of this only good is going to happen or I trust that things are unfolding as need be. I might not understand what's going on, I might be really confused, I might need help and clarity, but I'm putting myself forward and saying, out of this only good will come. I find when I can do that, it helps. It helps because it's sort of, we lead, we lead into that intention and then that opens it up and that allows us to be able to feel it and see and, and to breathe, breathe through the challenge, don't you find? Definitely, I think that's so true. It's, and I think you made a really valid point about the the, the kind of vocalizing it, affirming it that the only good will come from this. Because there are there are things that happen in life which seem rubbish, but there is always that that silver lining, isn't there? If you look for it and if you open yourself, as you said, to that possibility. Yeah, you need to have the eyes to see it and the ears to hear it. So that means you've got to actually invest. You've actually got to say, okay, I know that there's something good that's happening here. I can't necessarily see it yet, but I'm putting my faith, I'm putting my trust in that. And in doing that, it makes it more available. It makes us more able to be able to access it, to connect in with it, and, um, and to invite it in. What do you think, Jane? Uh, absolutely. Um, yeah, two months ago, I got ran over by my herd of horses, eight of them. And they have this wonderful way of, uh, and my, my horse is the one that uh, actually ran me over. <laughs> and afterwards I was like, where do I find the silver lining in this? Like my clavicle was broken and I was in a lot of pain and I was actually slowed down. So I was forced to trust. And, um, and what happened was I spent a lot of time lying on the earth and I realized pretty quickly that it was actually time for me to slow down and listen to my heart and be in, in the moment and, and, and trust. And the silver lining was that I became more connected to the earth and my higher self and my heart and it was actually um, the perfect, it was perfect timing and the perfect moment and yeah. so. Everything that happens to us has a profound meaning and experience, and has um, has more, much more than what appears for it to be. If we listen and really get into our heart, that is the key, isn't it? I think listening and, and taking that time to connect with the earth, because we can really recharge ourselves. Can't we? When we when we plug back into the kind of mother, yeah, we get that that flooding of you know. When we listen to our heartbeat connected to the heartbeat of the earth, well, I think for me anyway, I realise that 
I'm not alone and I'm not this only one trying to do this by myself. I'm part of this massive, amazing thing. You know, the earth is so incredible when you really stop to think about its, its magnificence and its beauty and the way it can support all of our lives, like all of us living on this planet. You know, it's incredible, isn't it? It's miraculous. Yeah, and, yeah, and the strength that you get from that, the strength you get from just reconnecting to the earth connects you to everything. It's uh, it's incredible. I like what you're saying, Jane, about the idea of grounding and just uh, well, both of you, this idea of just taking your shoes off, right, and just stopping and taking a big, deep breath, where there's nothing like breathing and just being still and connecting in with the earth. And the other thing that I know that I really need a lot of when I'm struggling to find my faith and I'm really lost on what the next step is going to be, is it really helps me to reset back to gratitude. So no matter what's going on, even if I can't see the silver lining, and often we can't, right, when we're in, we're in the middle of chaos or things falling apart. But if I can come to that place of gratitude where I can look and go, okay, well, you know, I have my health. I'm grateful for that. I've got family. I've got this incredible natural environment that I'm living in or it doesn't matter but like looking at our blessings and and being able to focus on that shifts our energy faster than anything else that yeah and, helps me a lot yeah and they've actually shown how we reflect like through the different emotions that we're showing they, they create a different vibration within us so fear is a much lower vibration so if you stay in that energy then you're not able to see. But as soon as you shift it to gratitude, that brings it back up to closer to love and to joy, which are the highest vibrations. And then when you reach those vibrations, you're able to tune into your intuition and see the silver lining, right? And see the next step that can be very empowering. So true. I think... Um what you were saying about about the the breath with that and and coming up with the things you're grateful for i've been practicing recently switching the gratitude thing a little bit round and and every day trying to come up with things i'm grateful for about myself um because i'm i'm very good at thinking about what i'm grateful for in the outside surroundings but actually what i'm grateful for about my myself it's been a bit more of a challenge but it's getting easier and easier and it, it I think it's a really useful thing for us to do is to honor the, the, the kind of the, the divine in us and to see that beauty within ourselves because I think for me anyway you know I don't think I grew up necessarily with a lot of self-love a lot of love for everything around but that self-love wasn't wasn't there so much and I've noticed a lot of people around have a similar issue going on you know we're very good at, at giving out and Danielle you made an amazing point the other day when we were talking about that self-love and the love for the earth you know and they're reflected so how much love we have for ourselves is reflected in how much love we have for the earth and I think that that trying that gratitude thing on yourself is is quite an interesting way to start actually noticing the blocks as well because when you say you know what you're grateful for about yourself the first time I did it I was like oh god how can I say this because am I being big-headed if I say that you know and all these these issues that were going on inside me which I didn't realize were there and so each day you do it you break through one of those layers a little bit more to get deeper into loving ourselves I so agree. I find that we're so easy to point out our failings and our misgivings and, and those things about ourselves that we feel are lacking. And yet each one of us has got unique qualities and gifts and each one of us is unique in the sense that there are, there are things that each person can do that no one else can do and they bring that, that beautiful original charisma and talent and skills and and it's our job is to really uncover within ourselves who we truly are so I love that idea of, of gratitude for ourselves 
I wrote actually this morning because I was struggling with my trust. So I think it's fun that you're saying this today. Um, but I started writing about gratitude and like you both, I can be very grateful for a lot of other things in my life. I also use gratitude to invite in as in thank you for the help that is coming. Thank you for the clarity that I don't yet have but I know is coming. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the healing, the opportunities to harmonize that are coming. But then this morning I was thinking the one thing that I'm really grateful for within myself is no matter how many times I've fallen down, I'm still here. I still get back up. Um, and no one's perfect, but we're perfectly unique. So that's what I was grateful for about myself this morning was that I'm still here. I'm still walking the path. I'm still wanting to learn, to grow, to expand. And no matter how many times I fall, and I fall a lot, I keep getting back up. So I'm going to ask you guys, what are you most grateful for about yourselves today? <laughs> Jane, over to you first. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> um, I, 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 I want to just react to Danielle first in that you know how we're taught that we are part of the whole, but our unique pieces make up the whole. So we have to become um, grateful and loving toward that unique piece, right? And that's that's how we connect to the whole. So it's kind of like this paradigm. But um, I think I'm most I'm I'm most grateful for the love that. Um, I really can exude to anyone that needs help, like with my patients in a homeopathic intake, the ability to truly listen to the soul that's in front of me and sit quietly with them for a full hour, hour and a half, whatever it takes to truly understand who they are. And I think this gift of, of listening is one of the things that I'm most grateful for in myself. And um, it's such it's such a, a gift to them and to myself because I, I find whoever comes to me is a reflection somehow. Somehow I learn from them what I need to heal within myself every time, and yet it's a gift to them at the same time. So um, I'm really learning to be grateful for that. That's beautiful. I think I think on, before I answer. Uh, Danielle's bit. I think that's so true. When we see people, I, I feel the same when, when people come to me. There is always that deeper reflection of something going on that I need to work on. Um, and that, I think, the thing I'm most grateful for about myself is my connection to the earth and my connection to the divine. And even though it sometimes falters, it always comes back and it's always there and I, I am open to listening to it. And I'm really grateful that I'm open to that. <laughs> I don't think I'd be here on this planet if I wasn't really, you know. Hmm. Those are so beautiful. And they're so simple and yet there's so much an essence of who we are, right? Um, that ability to listen, that desire to share love, to keep learning, to get up when things are, are hard, to be able to be who we are and and to be vulnerable and the power of being vulnerable. This is these to me are beautiful things to be grateful for in ourselves. I and, and we see it in so many people around us, don't we? There's, there's so much more that connects us than that separates us. And um, I think that when you're talking about that trusting, we have to, we have to really just check in with ourselves and, and ask a really fundamental question, which is, what do I most need? Not what do I want, but what do I most need? And how can I give it to myself? Because we're all going through challenges and we're all going through you know this this world is in is in such a state of flux so what we all need is that 
generosity of spirit. We all need that love. We need that gratitude. We need that compassion. We need that tenderness. And we can give it to ourselves. And just this conversation is giving it to me. So I'm thanking you guys. Yeah, it's giving it to me too. I'm I'm really feeling overwhelmed by the love of you two and the, the, the beauty that shines off you both, your, your divine beings. And I think also what you said, Danielle, made me think about the fact we also need to ask for help and and in our vulnerability actually open up and say to the universe I need support I need help you know and say to people around us you know I need help because so many people me included find that hard and I know when I'm struggling a bit if I actually just tune in for a minute and just say guys you know universe I need support I need you to come down I really need you to show me what's next like where is the next step What's the next thing I should do? And I think we have to, we forget sometimes that without asking for help, we can't get that guidance so often. You know, that our, our angels, our guides, whatever you want to call them, could be waiting around to give us everything. But unless we ask, nothing can really be given. And so I think remembering to ask and be vulnerable and open, because it's in that openness that life can flow. Because it, it always goes back to, for me, you know, it's like this, the fear, the lockdown, the, you know, when we're like this, if I try to give you something, you can't get it. And if I try to get anything, I can't get it either. But when we release and open up, suddenly we can give and receive. And I think, you know, that that, that is such a key part is just breathing through that fear, that lockdown and going, guys, help me, support me. Yeah, so beautiful. And don't you find that when you connect to the earth and truly be in the now, that a lot of that fear dissipates because the fear comes from programs, things that, you know, your mind saying this is going to happen, that is going to happen. But when you're just in the moment, there's only that moment. And, and there is no fear in that. Like, there's, it doesn't really exist. It's just a program. <laughs> so we have to breathe, right, Jane? We've got to breathe through that programming and let it flow through us. Yeah. I like it when, when I put my feet on the ground and, um, and I feel the wind and I just kind of feel like just blow through me all this fear, blow through me my uncertainty and my worry and my stress and my confusion and I'm ready to let it go. And I like what Juliet's saying about you know asking for help because I, I immediately actually thought of you, Jane, because when you broke your clavicle, you had nothing, you had to ask for help, and you're a really powerful lady. So, I mean, there's, there's something about being a real giver, and there are so many women that are phenomenal givers, but we have to have the two, as, as Juliet was saying, we have to be able to receive, and we have to be able to give. It's the two together. So true, and it's, it, you know, I think for me as a mother, my programming has been to like give, 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 and also as a healer, as, you know, working in that field, it's always, it was always, you're afraid that, going out, and that time for it to come in, I would block it so often, and I didn't realize I was blocking, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I can do it, I'm fine. I think that kind of superwoman, like, um, whatever it is, halo, not halo, but you know, over me saying this is this is what you should be doing. You you don't need to worry about yourself. You just help everyone else and that's your role. And you get to a point where you're like, actually, I, I can't help anyone else. Like, I'm empty. I have to, and, you know, for me, that's what happened before. It's I, I had to start to learn to receive because otherwise I couldn't actually give anymore. But I think if we can start to show people from when they're little, how to receive and how to give so that there's this equal exchange, so it's a constant flow. So you're never depleting your resources because it's always moving in and out as it should, like the breath, in and out. Can I speak to that for a moment? Because I know so often, and as women, but this is not just women, men as well, we're raised in this culture, in this community, in this society, 
that you you put other people's needs first. It's this concept that a good person, a good girl, a good daughter, or, or I'm only going to speak to that because that's what I know in this life, but certainly not excluding men. But this whole idea that a good person puts other people's needs first. Um, and so I did a lot of thinking about what self-love is, and we're talking about that trust and gratitude. And when you take care of yourself and you you put your needs first, when you do this in a loving way, it's called self-love. Self-love is doing for yourself that something which is loving. Selfish is doing something for yourself based in fear. It's a fundamental difference in energetics. So it isn't selfish to, to say, I can't give. I need to be able to say no at this point. I need to honor myself. Because if you're really truly listening to yourself, and trusting what your intuition and guidance is saying, which is that I need to re-energize, revitalize, renew, then that's self-loving. That's profound, because when we do something that's based in love for ourselves, it benefits everyone. It emanates out. Love emanates out just like fear emanates out. So when we do something for ourselves in the receiving or in the giving, and it comes from that place of love, wonderful. But if it comes from a place of fear, it doesn't matter what you think you're giving. The energetic of fear is what's going to be received, and that's what's going to go out. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. I find I find um, empathy is a very strong, empowering um, quality as well. Like truly being able to feel another what another is going through, supporting, and yet at the same time, loving yourself. Um, so, yeah, self-love at the same time as, as empathy is like, it's, it's very loving. Like, but, but still doing what you need to do yourself. And I find when you do that, um, you know, when you're worried that, oh, if I do what I need to do for myself in this moment, I'm going to hurt someone else or but often when you when you do that you find the other person goes oh no that's perfect that works out perfectly for me <laughs> you know like it's the trust again and I think we're taught it like we, we do like uh, Juliet said need to teach this at a young age so that we're all more in sync with this quality that we're talking about so we don't spend half our life then having to relearn <laughs> this basic principle, you know? It's 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 quite it's quite interesting, I think, because I think this is something that is really relevant to now, to today's day and age. Because when you look at kind of older cultures and older tribes of people, there was always that space for the individual to go off and do what they needed to do. And I think we are awakening to this now so much more as the vibration on the planet shifts and as more energy is coming into us. We need to be able to hold it by physically being supportive of our, our, our physical being. You know, This is something that I, I feel mas massively passionate about through nutrition, how we can support the physical being to hold that vibration and, and keep it rising instead of the body kind of being a bit slower than everything else. There are so many ways to be able to nourish ourselves. And nutrition, what we feed ourselves, is essential. Um, certainly what I feed my body is essential. And for me, what I feed my mind, what I feed my heart, how I speak to myself, how I use my words, uh, how I show up in this world is, for me, the biggest nutrition that I work on um, alongside good eating. But it's just, it's that letting go also, isn't it, of um, the fear, as Jane was talking about. <sighs> Gosh, we're talking about so many really important things here. And to me, it's really a, just always about coming back into that zero point and getting still and going, you know, what does my body need? What does my heart need? What does my mind need? And, um, and I need to prioritize that. Because when I do that, I'm strong. 
When I do that, I'm clear. And when, I'm do, when I do that, I'm in my heart. And when I'm in my heart, then I can trust. Then I can action. Then I can really be strong in who I am and how I show up in this world. But when I'm not, and when I'm just letting it weakens us, doesn't it? It just gets really hard, and it is hard. It's hard out there, so it's important. It's important to bring all of these little aspects of self-love in, in whatever way resonates, and just, you know, it's step by step. And some days are tougher than others, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, they are. And I find that often we have these subconscious beliefs that, you know, we get triggered and they're very powerful. Um, whenever, I, whenever I treat a patient, I feel like I'm band-aiding until I can get to the subconscious belief of why they don't love themselves or what program is there that's stopping them from being the joyful being and fully connected and grounded like we were saying and fully vibrant and alive and so I I always spend my first time with people getting to that subconscious core belief that's stopping them from being what you know uh, connected, I, I, I think of it, to their higher self so that they are in a place of self-love. And then with homeopathy I remove those programs and allow them to be more vibrant. And then, of course, then, then you do all the things that are self-loving, like feeding yourself the right food, you know, exercising so that you're the you know, best body that you can be in, grounding yourself to the earth because it feels good. You know, you're able to do all those other things. So I think maybe to finish, we should all come up with one thing that we are going to recommend that for ourselves, for each other, for anyone listening, to help really connect more into the feeling of trust. I think for me it would be breathing. I think to for people to go away and just spend a few minutes just deep breathing into the belly, really connecting in with their breath. And just allowing everything to still whilst whilst you do this. Next. We got a bit of a delay on our on our computer there for a minute, but I heard you. You were talking about breathing, so I would add to the breathing. Mm -hmm. I would add that those two questions, which is just going into the heart, as in adding on to what Juliet is saying, which is to breathe in and center yourself in your heart. I do this all the time. I come back down into my heart, out of my mind, and I ask the question. What does Danielle need most right now, and how can I give it to her? And so whatever comes up, it might be peace. It might be she needs a break, or she needs to step away, or she needs rest, or it, whatever it is, then I have to act on it. So the question is, what do I most need now? What does Danielle most need now? And I wait for the word. And then the question then is, how can I best give it to her? Not how can I get it from somewhere else. But how can <laughs> I do this for myself, right? Nourishing. So that's, that's what I would add to the beautiful mix that um, Juliet started. How about you, Jane? And I, and I would add exactly those two things, but then I would do it laying on the earth so that I can feel the strength of Mother Earth and my connection to the universe and, and 
as I'm doing those things, I feel re-energized, connected to my heart, connected to my breath, and connected to stillness. And yet, that that strength that comes from that. And then you're, you know, you're a then you're able to stand up and do what comes next. Amazing. It's so it's been so lovely talking to you guys, and I hope everyone uh, listening has really enjoyed. Uh, being part of this. Um, I know I feel renewed and uh, really filled with so much love for you wonderful uh, people. Mm. As do I. Big love to everyone and uh, yeah, may we all be blessed. <laughs> yeah, and thank you so much for the conversation. It just, it's empowering. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And we hope to see you all very soon again. Bye.